Welcome to the tutorial on making real-time measurements with your thermal biscuit or thermal blade. The main objective of this tutorial is to enable you to reliably use your thermal spider, thermal biscuit, or thermal blade for real-time temperature measurement. When you've finished with this tutorial, you will know how to set up for real-time measurement, how to work with configuration files, how to ensure that your system is working properly, and how to display and share your data with others. Before we dive into the details, let's quickly cover some background information. Your measurement system is composed of three major components. First is the data link software that runs on your computer and functions as the control and data acquisition program for the system. Next, there is the gateway module. The gateway is a two-way wireless network access point that serves as the interface between your computer and the wireless measurement modules. Finally, you should have one or more wireless measurement modules. There are several different types of modules, but we focus here on the thermal blade and thermal biscuit. With just two basic steps, we should be able to acquire and display data in real-time mode. These two steps are system installation and system configuration. In this tutorial, we assume that you've already installed your system, but just to be sure, we revisit the steps here. The first step, you should have installed your data link software on the computer that you plan to use. In the second step, you should connect the gateway to your computer using the provided USB cable. And third, you should have installed fresh batteries in the thermal blade or thermal biscuit units that you're planning on using. If you need help with any of these steps, please take a minute to watch the tutorial on the installation of your wireless temperature measurement system. Now we're ready to walk through how to use Datalink to configure the system and acquire some data. You'll also see how we use Datalink to store data on the computer and display it for analysis. Let's go to the computer and get going. We double click on the desktop icon to start data link. Yes, we want to forward data in real time and we want to start a new test. We know this information so let's move ahead. We enter 10 in the number of modules even though we're using 1. This gives us extra time for detecting modules. Sampling and rules fine. Here we need to select T-type thermocouples. We're using 8002, so the lowest serial number is 8000, and let's enter 9000 for the highest serial number. We see that 8002 is detected, so we click Stop Detection and move on. Here in the configuration chart, we need to change the chart to number 1 so that all 8 channels appear in the number 1 chart, and now we can use the description column to label a channel with some sort of descriptive name that will be easier for us to remember, such as uh, right oven air temperature. We're ready to save the file then in Excel format and let's save it as something we can remember like oven profile. Okay. Now we're initializing the network. We see that 8002 will be contacted and initialized so we can accept the initialization. The battery life is long enough for what we're doing, so let's move ahead. Here we want to start and stop on our command. These are fine. Now let's select degrees Fahrenheit since we're baking today. We'll save the file later under our own file name. If you're doing bread baking, you might want to use this in the future. We'd like to add a timestamp, and we'd like to have a chart in the final report as well, so we select those and we're ready to start our test. Let's expand this window so we can see what's going on a little bit better. We'll move the test control window over and then let's move the chart window down. Now we're ready to start the test and as soon as we get done adjusting these. Here we go. We'll click start test and we see that the real-time data starts coming in on all eight channels measuring room temperature. I'm going to grab one of the channels with my finger so that I can use my finger as a heat source to check out which channels are, are doing fine. So what we see here is that the chart shows that the temperature is coming up for each of the channels that I'm touching. I'm just holding these between my thumb and forefinger and uh, then I let go of them and of course the temperature comes back down. We'll gather data for a little bit here so that we have something to work with in our display. We've gathered enough data now, so let's move ahead and start, stop the test by just clicking the Stop Test button here. And then 
we do want to terminate the test. And now what we'd like to do is generate a report for the current test that we've just run. Let's call this something like tutorial test. It's generating the report now. We can see it's almost completed. There we go. Now we'll close this window. And now we'd like to view the test report. Look, this is a list of the late test, latest test reports, so we'll select the latest one and take a look. Here we are in Excel format, and we see that the temperature and timestamps and all that is available. And we click on the Chart tab to see that it's automatically generated a chart. We're ready to close the window now, so we click Back and then Exit, and we're done. Let's take a second to recap the setup process so that we can see what we've done and why. First, we use the configuration wizard to set the system up. During this process, we specified all relevant parameters and generated the configuration files. Next, we save the configuration files. This means that if we need to run a similar test in the future, we can skip the configuration wizard and directly call up the appropriate configuration file by clicking on Repeat an Existing Test at the second window. This greatly speeds up the process and allows even relatively unskilled staff to run the system easily and repeatably. The third step was where we acquired, recorded, and displayed the actual process data that we were interested in. And finally, we generated a report and displayed the data in Excel, allowing us to analyze and share the data. It really is just that simple. With this tutorial completed, you should be able to work with your Thermobiscuit or Thermoblade to reliably gather the data that you need. Before we go, we'd like to share a few tips that can make real-time data acquisition even easier. Our first tip to make module discovery, discovery easier, set the number of modules to around 10. Tip number two, use configuration settings that will meet your needs. For example, check the thermocouple types. Make sure that you have that correctly specified, otherwise the data won't make sense. Next thing is to make sure that you set the sampling interval to an appropriate value. If you're interested in rapid temperature changes, you can set the sampling interval at one half to one quarter of a second to capture these fast changes. But if you're interested in slower things, such as are typical in baking, then you can set the sampling interval to two or three seconds. At these lower data rates, less data will be collected, and so the data files will be smaller and graphing and analysis will be easier. So keep in mind what type of data you require and set up so that you get the best result for your needs. Tip 3. Use easily remembered file names. During setup we created these configuration files that can also be used in similar subsequent tests. That's why it's helpful to use easily remembered and easily recognized file names such as the oven profile file name that we used here. And a final tip is you can always use a convenient heat source to confirm proper operation. This can be particularly useful to confirm channel identity as you're setting up. Well, it's as simple as that. Now you know how to reliably acquire real-time data with your Thermobiscuit or Thermoblade. We hope that you found this tutorial helpful, but if you still have questions or are running into any difficulties, please give us a call. We're always ready to help and always eager to hear from you.